How many YouTubers actually use Radeon GPUs? Oh, sure, they talk a big game about performance per dollar on Team Red, but open up their PC and I bet you'll see an RTX card. Every now and again you see creators make a video about how they're switching to AMD like it's some big sacrifice they're making to abandon their G-forces and slum it with the Radeon plebs. Well, I guess now that includes me. I've been using Nvidia GeForce GPUs in my personal rig for almost 7 years now. I replaced a dead R9 290X with a 6GB GTX 1060 in early 2017, and since then it's been team green all the way. I don't want you to think it's out of some sense of brand loyalty, that's not my cup of tea at all. People who are loyal to brands are weird to me. Not that I don't think you can have a legitimate favourite, but being uncritical about a moral corpse simply because they made an ad and you believed it is naive at best. I initially stuck with GeForce because the hype was pretty strong around Pascal, but I didn't need an overenthusiastic thumbnail to get me interested in RTX. In my teens, I was a bit of a nerd about 3D software, and I'd tried my hand at modelling and rendering with software like Povray back in the 90s. Back then, your average PC could take hours to render even a single frame of a ray traced scene. The idea of a graphics card that could render RT fast enough for real time game visuals was a big freaking deal, and I knew I wanted to experience it for myself. Since the launch of RTX, I've owned three different cards in the series. The RTX 2080, which I sold with the intent of buying a 3080. The 3060 Ti, which I bought when the reality of the scalper pandemic settled in and it was clear I'd never get a 3080 for a decent price. And most recently, the 3070, which I got for the bargain price of about £650. or negative 350 after I sold my 3060 Ti to a crypto miner for a grand. I was always left a little disappointed by the reality of mid-level RT, but my budget has never stretched high enough to reach the top tier products that promised untold levels of ray tracing fidelity. Probably for the best, as most of those claims appear to be exaggerated, but the promise of better and better RT over time should have kept me tethered to Nvidia like a modern day Renfield. So what happened? Why am I switching? Well... In case you haven't been paying attention to gaming this year, and I couldn't blame you if you hadn't, 2023 has been a bit of a bad year for PC owners. Oh, I know it's probably going to go down in history as one of the best years of all time for gaming. The quality of the games themselves has been beyond reproach. Almost every genre has had a new contender for a spot in the all-time top 10. And it's f***ing September. We're still waiting on Alan Wake 2, the new Forza, the new City Skylines, the new COD, the new Total War, Spider-Man 2, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Thirsty Suitor... Uh, am I reading that right? Huh. The problem isn't the games, it's the PC versions of those games. Most of those awesome 2023 releases have been made with the 9th generation consoles in mind. Now there's no need to take the elderly PS4 and Xbox One into consideration, game devs have apparently felt free to go nuts with textures and shadow maps and other memory hungry assets. Unfortunately, that creates a bit of a problem for PC gamers. The last few years of PC tech crises, from component shortages to cryptomania to mass scalping, have caused stagnation in the graphics card market. Nvidia, the brand who hooked me with their fancy RT rendering, have always had a treat em mean, keep em keen approach to VRAM. My RTX 3070, a card from only three years and one generation ago, had 8GB about the same amount as the Xbox Series S, Microsoft's controversial budget console that has been accused by some of holding back the generation. In graphics card terms, 8GB wasn't a loss by the standards of 2020. It's the same as the RTX 2070 and GTX 1070 before it, but it had mostly been enough in the past. Now it was starting to become a liability. Some games stutter and become unpleasant to play, others fail to load assets or rely on heavy upscaling and so become unpleasant to look at. 
This newfound shortcoming in my personal rig put me in the mood to upgrade, but because of the aforementioned stagnation, the options weren't looking particularly inspiring. The new RTX 40 series has seen Nvidia making some token efforts to increase VRAM, but on the whole it's been a bit of a cursed monkey's paw situation, with benefits in one area offset by cutbacks in others. Sure, the 4070 has 12GB of VRAM, but it's on a narrower bus than its predecessor, and I cussed out AMD for skimping on memory bandwidth on the budget RX 6500 XT, so I'm certainly not going to forgive Nvidia for doing the same thing on a card that costs more than twice as much. I am known as something of an evangelist for buying used PC tech, so the RTX 3080 Ti or the regular 12GB 3080 looked like better choices. Not only are they better performers for the money than their replacements, but they also better fit the Iceberg brand. However, I'm not a rich man. I can't quite live on YouTube ad revenue alone just yet, and when I have cash to spend it usually goes on buying old stuff to review which then gets sold to afford the next old thing to review. If I was going to spend 500 quid on a graphics card for my personal rig, it couldn't just be for me. As well as old graphics cards, I also review old CPUs, from dual-core Pentiums and i3s to Xeons with more cores, threads and cache than many modern desktop chips. Testing CPUs requires a powerful GPU to maximise the processor's potential, and my go-to for testing had been the same RTX 3070 that I used in my personal rig. I didn't see the point in splashing out on a second graphics card when I already had a perfectly competent one on hand. However, it turned out that GeForce isn't the best choice for this particular task. In a video earlier this year, I talked about GPU driver overhead and how weaker CPUs often perform better when paired with Radeons because of it. I couldn't justify spending hundreds on a high-end Radeon exclusively for CPU testing, especially when the end result would just be to see a few bigger numbers in a percentage of my videos. However, perhaps I could justify buying a high-end Radeon for both CPU testing and my personal rig. This wouldn't necessarily mean giving up on ray tracing altogether. Since the 6000 series, AMD has come up with their own RT solution, using the texture mapping units to calculate rays rather than dedicated purpose-made cores. This solution hasn't yet proven itself to be capable of keeping up with Nvidia, however, and from the benchmarks I've seen, it doesn't look like the RX 7000 series ray tracing is more than a few percent improved over the 6000 series. For the moment, AMD's ray tracing looks to be competing with first gen RTX, a series which I left behind three years ago. But hey, it's not like RT's everything it cracked up to be, right? Off the top of my head, I can't think of any RT exclusive titles that aren't derived from an earlier non RT game. Quake 2, Portal, Metro Exodus, all of them came out in rasterized versions first, and I've already played them. If I want to play them again, but with RT, and my hypothetical AMD GPU can't run them without copious amounts of ugly upscaling, then tough luck. I knew the cake was a lie anyway. RT is making its way into more and more new games of course, but often in a half-assed kind of way. Most games only use ray tracing for reflections, or shadows, or lighting, or maybe two out of three. RT had its killer app in 2020 with Cyberpunk 2077, but I finished it. The DLC's out soon, and I'll probably play it with some measure of ray tracing enabled regardless, but an AMD card doesn't have a hope in hell of running it with RT Overdrive, the path traced rendering mode introduced earlier this year that completely replaces rasterized rendering. I don't even hold any hope for the upcoming FSR 3 frame generation. The fastest Radeons can only drive about 8 FPS at 1440p, so unless FSR 3 can somehow generate about 4 extra frames in between each genuine one, without them looking like dog shit, I don't think it's the answer. On the other hand, beyond Phantom Liberty, what's there to look forward to for RT enthusiasts? Not console ports, that's for sure. Everything designed around Xbox or PS5 will continue to have the bare minimum of ray tracing functionality pasted over standard rasterization, precisely because of their AMD RDNA 2 architecture. The brilliant future of RT is that it will one day replace conventional rasterized rendering, 
making games look more realistic and also easier to produce. Unfortunately, that future looks pretty far off. The point is, RT remains underdeveloped in 2023, at least in my opinion, and my continuing to buy RTX cards in the hope that one day that investment will have been worthwhile because of all the incredible RT exclusives is, well, insanity. I want to talk more about my RT disappointment. I've been thinking of starting a second channel of video essays and opinion pieces which wouldn't fit in on this channel, and I think that will make a good topic for an essay. Let me know your thoughts. So, in summary, upgrading to a Radeon RX 6000 series would solve the VRAM issue, the top models in the range would all count as genuine upgrades from my old 3070, and my reviews of older CPUs would benefit from a powerful GPU with low driver overhead. I still get to enable RT in the games that wear it lightly, though whichever model I buy won't compete with a 4080 or even a 3080 Ti and the only sacrifice I make is that any new Path Trace games will be basically unplayable, and it's not like there's a lot of them about anyway. With all that in mind, it seems like I've got my answer. Well, in truth, I still have my doubts, I haven't even talked about losing DLSS, but before I had a chance to reconsider, my mind got made up for me. I listed my RTX 3070 for sale during a promotional weekend on eBay, and it sold immediately. I thought I'd maybe get a few days to change my mind. Anyway, once the money hit my account, I pulled the trigger on this, my new old graphics card, a Sapphire Nitro RX 6900 XT. Yes, the GPU I predicted would become the best value of 2023 at the start of the year, from the manufacturer who makes the sexiest coolers outside of Nvidia. Most other RX 6900 XTs didn't fit in my Fantex M80X case, and it also only needs two 8-pin power connectors, meaning one less cable trailing around the backside of my case. The super thick heatsink hangs a bit too close to the PSU shroud for my liking, and as a result it runs pretty warm, even undervolted and repasted it's in the low 80s under load, with hotspot temps in the 90s. For a little over £500 though, I think I got a reasonable deal. I could have gone for a 6800 XT, but it was only looking like about £60 or so cheaper. The 6950 XT didn't seem worth paying more for. Yes, it has higher clocked VRAM and overclocking the 6900s can't quite make up the difference, but I can live with it. As for the new 7700 XT and 7800 XT, they don't really compare to the old flagship. Am I happy with my purchase? Kinda, yeah. I haven't done a full benchmark test so far, that'll come later in the year, but Ratchet & Clank can run at 1440 with everything cranked up at about 90 FPS, and Starfield runs at 1440 high at around the high 50s to low 60s. Of course, this is my video editing rig, and DaVinci Resolve performance is a key issue for me. It turns out to have been a bit of a double-edged upgrade in that regard, as timeline scrubbing through H.264 and H.265 clips is dramatically better on the Radeon than it was on the GeForce, and render times are also much faster. But stacked layers and transitions and even graded clips can be painfully slow to work with. In an ideal world, I'd be using a 13th gen Intel CPU with integrated graphics, as QuickSync is supposed to be the dog's bollocks for video editing, but I'm only up for making one major buying decision at a time. Will I regret moving to AMD? Hopefully not. I know I didn't buy crap, but there are new things on the horizon for Nvidia that might get me to return in the future. DLSS 3.5 looks very interesting, and if some game developers would like to make the bold decision of producing RT exclusive games, then I might be tempted back. No decisions forever, and not committing to any particular brand means I'm free to change my mind based on new market conditions, rather than blindly swallowing whatever a particular billion dollar corporation is shoveling. Hopefully by the time there are new, more compelling offerings from Nvidia or AMD, or indeed Intel. I'll be getting millions of views a month and board partners will be sending me free review samples. Until then, thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.